gritty, bleeding, triple my city. Don't score with the Steelers, no enemy. Hosing some Hennessy, catch us out stomping the yard. Cannon yards, my foot mechanery. See, it's nitty gritty, nigga, keep on getting litty. Two times a week, giving keys to the city. Tune in, get with me. I got that, I got that, see in the game a little differently. Welcome back, 413, Nitty Gritty Sports Talk Radio Show. I go by the name of Roscoe English, and of course, I'm here with the plot. Got my guy Keys with me. What's going on? How y'all feeling up there? My man, Nick. Leaders of the North, Sco, what's up? <laughs> well, uh, by half a percentage point. And of course, last but not least, Keith PJ. It don't take long for order to get restored, Sco. That was quick. By half a point? No, we the roses are very. We, we, we got a better division right there. You would want that. Before half we get point, started, though. you would want. It, you would want that half a point, though. No, I'm. I'm not mad at that. Say what you got to <laughs> say to make y'all feel better. But is it because we lost to Dallas and y'all beat Dallas? Is that why? No. Nah, oh, because of the Bengals. Division. Oh, that ain't fair. We ain't even play nobody yet. Facts is facts. Hey man, I ain't. I, I didn't make the tiebreakers. You know what I mean? Facts is facts. <laughs> I'm not mad. I'm not mad. We've been at waiting all. five weeks for this shit. I'm, uh, I'm not mad at you. I'm not mad at you. <laughs> and since you've been waiting for five weeks, let's start with the bank. <laughs> the Ravens beat the Bengals in the overtime shootout, 41 to 38. Lamar Jackson threw for 348 yards, four touchdowns. Joe Burrow threw for 392 yards, five touchdowns. But he had that one blemish. He had an interception. Keys, you were there live in person. Start with you. Um, yeah, man, it was it was a good time. That was, that was the first important thing. It was a good time. Shout out to the Bengal fans. They were, everybody up there was cool. I uh, wasn't nobody acting crazy. So you had to take out. that that walk that they talked to, uh did they take the practice? You took that same walk? No, absolutely not. Oh, okay, okay, okay. No, absolutely <laughs> not. That that's no, absolutely not. But um, no, to talk about the game, um, I mean, it's probably it's one of them instant, you know, ESPN classic games. That drink can go down as a top ten, top fifteen game of all time. It was it was that type of game, just big play after big play. Um, we've seen two quarterbacks at the top of their games pretty much. Um, I mean, the game set defense back about fifty years, but you know, other than that, is you saw two quarterbacks at the top of their game. Um, Burrow, big play. Lamar comes back with big play. So hopefully, we can put the narrative to sleep that he can't play from behind or. You know, like that. I mean, he he's shown that, you know, he he's definitely a throw of the football. Um yeah, it, it, it was just good to see. It was it was just good to see that they they switched their game plan. You know, they was really, really run heavy against the Cowboys, which you against the Cowboys, which you had to do because um, you know, they they run defense as trash. That's what you're supposed to do. And now this defense, you know, they they <clears throat> the type of defense that the Bengals were playing, you know, they were stuffing the box. They wasn't they wasn't gonna let Henry get off, they wasn't gonna let Lamar get off, whatever sort of way he was had to throw the ball, and he did that very very well um is it was good to see him that all the targets that he got involved pretty much you know it was everybody at kolar um you know i think kolar is a blend of of both of them put together um you know when you that big you that strong you run that fast i think you should get more targets which they you know i think they find in them um so no it, it was it was good to see it, it was it was good to see that you know we always talk about the, the best throwers of the Mahomes, the Burrows, and all. It was good to see Lamar Jackson go go toe for toe with that. Um, and you know, it, it, it everybody in there understands, even if the Bengals fans recognize, like Lamar is one of those ones. You know, they they love they love Joe. Of course, they love Joe. They they think Joe's the best degree ever. But they, um, nobody was saying nothing bad about Lamar. Not one not one bad thing was said about him. Um, so and I think I think he he's went out and proven that he he is the guy. He is a goat. Um, and it was MVP performance. We're going to talk about the play later in the show, but it was it was definitely MVP performance. Um, but not to take enough away for the Bengals. Like I said, Joe Burrow, is he, he's one of those ones too. Like he could literally make any throw from any angle, any position. People are on his feet. People are on his arms. He has that type of arm strength. He has that quick release. There's times when I thought the Ravens were sacking him, but and he literally was just getting the ball out of the dropper down, and he's accurate as hell. Like he, he doesn't miss. Um, and granted, it helps that he has T. Higgins and Jamal Chase. He has Tyler Boyd. You know, we foot now before that, but he he's a very accurate quarterback. Um, he's a very talented quarterback. Um, but I don't I don't know where the Bengals go for it because like I said, we can we're gonna talk about the Ravens defense all day, but their defense is is trash. Like they they can't stop anything, they can't do anything. Um, they can't do anything. They was constantly out of position. Um 
getting the calls in late. They wasn't lining up. I don't know who has the green dot, but they they were just a mess all day. Um, and Lamar took advantage of him. He literally took advantage of him. The Ravens were snapping the ball. Half of the time, the Bengals weren't lined up. They they just weren't lined up. They were still running, trying to get in position. They were still talking to each other. And the ball was being snapped. And I think that's what happened with the fumbles, where Lamar was he was moving so fast sometimes, or whatever that he that that's what happened because they, the Bengals weren't lined up. He had him, you know, on the play with Ronnie Stanley decided to look back and not block. That was a touchdown. It's just that it's Ronnie Stanley didn't block. Um, so that that's what that's what the fumbles came. The fumbles came down to not so much that Lamar was uh, he was trying to he was rushing because the Bengals weren't lined up. He had him. He had him for a big play. Um, which was the constant theme all, all game. They just could not get lined up, uh, whereas the, the Ravens on defense, I think it just came from, from poor tackling, which would, it's, it always happens to be poor tackling. Um, I, I think they need to change the type of scheme they run. I think they try to stay vanilla with, with Joe Burrow. They, they play too much zone with Joe Burrow. You can't do that, man. It's literally eating them alive. Um, so I, I don't know where this defense go from here, but you're not going to win the championship with that defense. That defense is poor. It's, it's really bad. It's horrible. Um, your quarterback pretty much got to be Superman in order for you to win a game like that when your defense literally couldn't stop anything, nothing. The, your quarterback got to get a play and you give up a 70-yard touchdown to Chase because you have a $20 million linebacker takes the wrong angle. Like, is that's bad football. You can't allow that to happen. Um, and just like like just like just uh, Nick said, if it wasn't for Lamar Jackson, the Ravens would have lost that game by a lot of points, man. No, that defense was bad or has to be better. It has to be some type of adjust. They made they literally made no adjustments, no bump and run, none of that. They were just letting them come off the ball. They couldn't stop the red zone defenses, the worst I ever seen. Couldn't stop in the red zone. It wasn't like the Bengals was running anything special. They were just getting off the ball and running. Um, so yeah, that defense has to be fixed. It, it, it has to be fixed. Um, but yeah, that's 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 what I take it for. I just took it was just a great game. It was it was a game. Jackson was going back and forth. It was it was a real treat to see. Yeah, I mean that was that was an awesome game, man. I totally agree as far as the sentiment that it was one of the classic games I've witnessed. I mean, as far as Raven games specifically, it had to have been top five, top ten um, games that I've watched. Um, and you know, divisional for game, the first divisional game of the year, uh, big game on the road. I loved the way that the team fought. Uh, the team stuck together regardless of what was going on, regardless of the barrage of points we allowed to be scored. And, you know, Jamar Chase, you know, a lot of teams, you know, they would see what Chase was doing on the other side of the field and probably would get discouraged or just feel like this isn't our day. But um, we kept fighting. We kept fighting. We kept coming back. And we always kept ourselves um, in the game. So, again, it's one of those situations where the defense didn't do our job or do their job, but. The offense is actually able to score points, so it didn't matter. Um, you know, Joe Burrow made some great throws, uh, had some pressure in his face, um, was able to throw off his back foot a lot, uh, make some great throws in tight windows. Um, but again, you know, he's a he's a very good quarterback. I my issue with, with Joe Burrow was the top three talks, and he's the better than Lamar talks. That's it's not enough. It's not enough that he's doing that's impacting his team. That's allowing him to be put over people like Lamar and and people that are put, literally, you know, going into the playoffs year after year, aren't getting injured year after year, so on and so forth. Um, and I don't want to, uh, you know, he he quarterbacks are one in fourteen. Like people get slandered for less. You know what I mean? The Ravens are ranked thirty first in the NFL in pass defense, so it didn't take much to carve us up. Um, you know, 392 yards, five passing touchdowns, absolutely unacceptable. Uh, Jamar Chase, he he went on a thousand yard receiving yesterday, you know, and two touchdowns. I, like he had a whole career yesterday. It was unbelievable. Um, Nate Wiggins, you know, he only played 31% of the snaps, not going to rag on him too much, um, but he did play 86% of the snaps last week against Buffalo. So again, Styles makes fights. Um, he was credited with two catches allowed for 51 yards. Marlon Humphrey, you know, uh, persevered throughout the game. He was getting cooked, though. Uh, he gave up a catch on all five of his targets for 89 yards and two touchdowns. Um, Brandon Stevens was credited with seven catches on eight targets for 61 yards. Um, and the highest graded person yesterday in the secondary was Kyle Hamilton, and the lowest graded person was Marcus Williams. So that just tells you how our secondary played yesterday. So we can give Joe Burrow credit for sure, but we didn't play well at all. 
at all. And um, like you said, I mean, that's going to have to change. I mean, that type of defense isn't isn't going to um, be a championship level defense when the game slows down uh, in January and February. So we're going to have to figure out uh, what to do there, being that we have put a lot of financial resources into the defense, into that secondary specifically, and we expect results um, to the offenses. Shout out to everybody on offense. Shout out to that offensive line. I think we found a combination that's clicking. So no need to change it. When Voorhees is back, you know, uh, left guard, we have uh, Makari at left guard, Rosegar in at right tackle. Um, let's just keep it like this. I, I'm cool with how we are able to move the ball. If you notice, Zay Flowers is actually running routes now. He's actually like a wide receiver again. Like they, they let him go 20, 25 yards down the field and he's making plays. Um, and that was great to see, you know, uh, they did stop our run or, or limit it as much as they could. And we had to pivot, especially once we started trailing. And once we started trailing, we flipped that switch and, and became a team that could throw the ball and spread it out more. And I love to see it. Uh, Zay Flowers, seven catches, 111 yards, multiple 20 yard catches. Um, you know, he was great, you know, to get the pass game going. I mean, it was a really balanced passing attack. If you just look at, um, uh, the the way Lamar was able to spread the ball and give people their targets. Charlie Kolar, four targets, three catches, 64 yards and a tud. Bateman, eight targets, four catches, 58 yards and a tud. Mark Andrews, five targets, four catches, 55 yards, so on and so forth. Even Tylen Wallace made a play. So I think the story yesterday was Lamar Jackson. Uh, that was the best I've ever seen him play. And I've seen Lamar Jackson play for seven seasons. Mm -hmm now um win two mvps that game yesterday was the most confident and assured i've ever seen him play he uh he never got too down on himself every time every time there was some adversity he just looked at his teammates and said let's go let's go and he went out the next drive and he backed up everything that he said you know what i mean so i have nothing to say about offense right now um obviously we're not where we want to be at any stretch and we can talk about john harp i mean there's a lot to talk about i just want to say that was a great fuck that was a great win and um i was so happy watching lamar jackson play yesterday and that was amazing yeah no facts proud to be a ravens fan um after that dub yesterday um i think y'all covered covered it well like y'all always do um but I, I i can't say it enough about lamar jackson um and just that performance yesterday i think a lot of it had to do that pace like that, they picked up that pace, and for whatever reason, it just had Lamar on go. Um, obviously, they were down, so they had to score quick. But that that heightened that up tempo offense. It seemed like he seemed to uh, thrive in it um, yesterday, and so um, big play. Derrick Henry closing the game out in overtime with a big time run. That's why he's here. Obviously, you saw when we were down ten to start the fourth quarter. Who was in the game? We've talked about it. It was Justice Hill. What can you do with Derrick Henry at that junction in the game? But you get the game close enough and he's able to come in and close with a big time run in overtime. That's what you got to do. Um, I kind of been on Zach or since early on this season, but it's we five weeks in now and it's still not looking. This defense still, they just giving up too much. I mean, a screen pass to Jamar Chase, which should be like a three, four yard pass. He takes to the house. Um I'm sure we'll talk about the touchdown pass to Jam Jamar Chase before halftime, and a lot of that was on coaching. Maybe they shouldn't have even had the ball, um, but that's neither here nor there. Marcus Williams looks terrible. Um, looks like a waste of money, waste of time. Um, who else was it yesterday? Um, Malik Harrison. I, 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 I've, I've almost seen enough of that as well. I, I thought week one was enough, honestly, but um, – Another one who we, we need more production from. Um, and so Brandon Stevens, I mean, we've – they left him on the alley yesterday. They ain't really doing him no favors, to be honest with you. Um, but, it's a contract year for him, right? Nah, he don't want no contract. He's not yeah, one he this guy. year. <laughs> you know, he don't want no contract. He's not one this year. Right. He's not the guy. He's definitely not, not the guy. not one this year. But your three tight ends came to play yesterday. Cola, Mark Andrews got back in the mix, made some catches. Um, Isaiah likely can't speak enough about him and his jump ball, like his 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 ability to pinpoint the ball at his highest point. Like he's just, you could tell he probably used to hoop and grab rebounds for real. Like he was a double double type guy. Like that's what you need. Just somebody who's gonna go out there and make plays, and you can tell Lamar trust him. Throwing that ball out of bounds like that, up in the air like that, across your body essentially. I mean, granted, it was Geno Stone, and I'm throwing it at him too, but 
<laughs> that's that's a play. That's a play, uh, and, and and that's what you want. Gina was in, in, in trouble to make all day yesterday. But yeah, they they had Gina. They the Bengals defense is 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 it's, it's not what it's what it's been in, in years past. But I mean, Lamar nine and one now against the Bengals. I think we can put the Joe first. Lamar talk the rest. I think we already knew what that was, but Barrels had a good game too. And I mean, if he doesn't throw that pick to Marlon late, I mean, they got every chance to potentially win that game too. I don't think his team did him no favors by being conservative in overtime and just running ask, the ball uh, three straight times. But hey, Keys, what was the vibe in, in the stadium? Because I'm watching it and I'm shocked that yeah, yeah, they, they was just they trying to set up a field goal instead of at right least trying right. to get to the 20. Yeah, they were very, very upset. They they wanted to, they wanted Zach to throw the ball. Um, they they didn't like to conserve. They they don't trust the kicker. I think they said he missed a kick early shift to tie a game. He did something else. The guy, uh, some uh, Bengals fan, was telling me um, in another game they didn't trust the kicker. They said it was too long of a field goal. Um, that they just did. Yeah, they, they don't like Zach Taylor anyway. Like I think all of us feel the same way about our coaches that they they just like, but they definitely don't like Zach Taylor at all. CBS showed a graphic that he had made like. 14 or 15 straight fourth quarter and overtime field goals. So I don't that's what you know they about to yeah. miss. That's what I mean. Hey, thank you for jinxing them. But at the same token, did the Bengals fans like Joe Burrow throwing in the fourth quarter with a few minutes? I, to, I mean, I that's, told that's them, the reason we won. I told I told them that they should have just ran the ball and set up for the field. I mean, you plan you, this is what you do. Like you the kick is a kicker for the reason he should be to make a 53 yard field, a 51 yard field goal. He would have it wasn't his fault that they dropped this, they yeah, dropped, they dropped it. it. It wasn't yeah, his fault, he missed the kick. Yeah. Right. Were, I mean, they just wanted to be a little bit more aggressive, but at the same time, it was the right play. It was it was good coaching to run the ball there. You don't want to rest on another interception. Then what happened? You know? Yeah, I think I, I, I think that's that's the only reason why they were semi conservative because yeah. being conservative probably would have won them the game to begin with. So he's probably, yeah, probably right. trying to correct it. We should have play. never put them in that position. That yeah. fumble. That that fumble. Yeah, that it, fumble was, was, it was it was it was, it was a, it, that shit was deflating because you know everybody knew the game was over. Then that shit happened, and it just God like they, sure they, it, it, right. This game, this game, a whole bunch of life. It just gave a whole bunch of life, a whole bunch of life. But then he took the crowd out of the game. When like I said, when he when you when he got conservative after the fumble recovery, he got you know took the crowd out of the game. So it, it didn't help them. But yeah, to your point about he, he could he, he was picking the choose he could throw. Like they were literally after Dax Hill went down, it was over for them. They already was short. Mike Hill wasn't playing. And once that hill went out with the ACL in the first at the, end of the first quarter, it was done. They, they had they literally had no type of defense. Um, they have no linebackers. I don't know who their linebackers are. They they, they literally have no linebackers. Um, they have no cornerbacks. Like I said, this is a defense that could have had Bates and Battle back there, but they had to pay Joe, and they and now they got to pay uh, Jamar a bigger bag. He's he's going to get more money now. They 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 messed up by not giving the extension on whatever they wanted, but was it a, a dollar or whatever, ten dollars more than, than than Justin Jefferson? Like this is what Jamar Chase can do. Like he literally was the best player on the field besides Lamar. He he literally was the best player on the field. He is that. It must be nice. <laughs> man. You got all that and you want it for Jesus. Right. Like he, he is uh. that. So yeah. Um I, it's not, I mean, they, they want it for because they just they as a team, they just suck. Like they there's no way. They, they can't put three phases together. This, they are a bad football Shit, team. We can't either. <laughs> You're right. We just got Lamar. I mean, we just I we mean, just got Lamar. Lamar. That's the difference. I don't know. I, honestly, that game. The, the, honestly, I think Our special teams is ass too. I think I think God was looking. The football guys looking down because Lamar was just so special yesterday. But I don't. Mean, that game. That both teams lost that game three, four different times. You know, before that, before it actually came down to what it what it was. Now Joe had us in a blender, like all trolling. Well, not even trolling, but you know, all narrative aside, I guess. Uh, Joe had us in a in a blender, man. That Joe and um Jamar Chase connection, man. I don't know who to liken it to, but it's up there as far as top. That's like that's that's like it's Cannon like it's time. like it's like Peyton and Marvin Harrison, yeah, though. They like, keep going. That shit is like that. I was about to say Dante and Randy Moss, but I didn't want to disrespect Joe by saying Dante, but it just seems un, as unstoppable as that, or Tom Brady and, and maybe it's Tom Brady and uh Yo, Brandon, they look, right? when they when they see Marlon Huffy and Brandon Steve's lined up against a cross for them, dog. They it's oh, like yeah. thanks, it's like Thanksgiving Bobby dinner chicken. for them, dog. Yeah, like they uh they just was running past them, like they literally were just lining up. The Ravens were playing, they wasn't even playing bumper run, they were off coverage and they were just running past them every single time. Yo, last two weeks, all I've seen in like the back of my thoughts were like the back of Brandon Stevens' jersey. Like, like I'm sick of saying 20. Like, first of all, all the 21s that have that have worn that number in in Baltimore history. Why does he have number 21? Like, usually 21 means you ready to shut shit Yo, down. Yeah, he went on that 70 yard touchdown. Literally, everybody thought the game was over, dog. 
Like that shit was crazy. And then when this happened, it gave it. It gave him when this happened. It was like now, Scott, right, that's how you quarterback. The Bengals fans, when this happened, the Bengals fans like, all right, now <laughs> they, they, it's they, listen. They, ain't, ain't nothing, like, you gotta be thinking scary hours after ain't, that, yo. Ain't nothing, I, I ain't almost went to the The Bengals fans, they. they oh, I turned Super Saiyan. They not really bad fan, bad fans because they ain't never won nothing. I was powering up in the crib. You gotta you gotta win to be an angry fan like to really know how to talk trash. So they don't really know how to talk. Trash. They never, <laughs> they never won nothing. So like they never won nothing. So it's like they they nice because they never won nothing. I can tell. So they, like, they just happy to be. Uh, in. Yeah, they just yeah, happy to be. Yeah. And and they don't talk about no. They don't talk about like boom enough like that. When you talk to a Steelers fan, even a Browns fan, you'll talk about the old days. They their history is Joe Burrow, dog. Like they don't talk about anything. They don't even talk about Ocho or nothing like that. <laughs> Damn, what about Carson Palmer? Yeah, no, Carson Palmer. Yeah. No John Kitna. Like, Joe Burrow. Like this, they, this these are the these are, these are the best athletes they didn't have. They feel like, and now they 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 never had a Super Bowl window. Is what I'm saying. Like this is their Super Bowl window, and it's closing, and they know that. I, I saw. So it was like, yeah, they had they had, had they have rings. Right. 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 So yeah, like, they did. They did. So it's like they don't know how to really be angry or or really be. Be like talk trash. Like I said, it's different when you talk to a Steelers fan. They can talk shit. They, they want. They know how to win. The Bengals ain't never won nothing. So being as though y'all are talking a little different these days, so what's y'all confidence level now compared to after the Raiders game? I mean, to get a win like that in that environment and to come out like that, you, you it got to be high. You just you just don't want your head coach, man. Like calling that timeout before the first half was was ridiculous. Like that made no sense. It really made no sense, and it, it, it was borderline. Like you need to be fired. You don't need to come back out after halftime. And once again, Lamar saved him. But you gotta be that confidence high. I mean, you got another big game. You got Jay Daniels coming in, but your confidence high after you you know you beat the the Bills at home, and then you you go on the road and win your first AFC. You know, after especially my I guess my point is after starting zero and two, you now three and two. Your confidence is very high. Yeah, I'm at like a seven score, um, okay. ma- mainly because I'm trying to stay grounded in the moment. But the three straight victories um, and mainly the Bills. Well, actually, I can I include Cowboys in there because they were a playoff team last year and they have a winning record now. So it's not like uh, that. Like we we might know like what the Cowboys are going to be long term, but there's still a team that's going to win 10 to 12 games. So if I include the Cowboys, Bills and Bengals, we've we've beaten three. Um, you know, teams that have pedigree, I'll say. I uh, I can't even call the Bengals a good team because of their record, but they have pedigree and they have playmakers. So, you know, I do feel good after these wins, but uh, there's there's some concerning signs that won't let me push it to an 8, 9, or 10. Um, that defense, you know, the pass defense, again, I, I don't know what the answer is or the magical elixir because the secondary is not supposed to be a weakness. Do you know how much money we pay Marcus now, Williams? Going, going into the season, I think everybody yeah. agreed that that was supposed to be the strength. They know they're supposed to be. They know they're supposed to be the strength. <laughs> Marlon yeah. Humphrey told them pregame in a, in a pregame speech. I saw. Let's be who we're supposed to be. The strength for the team. They know wow. they're supposed to be the strength of the team. And Listen, <laughs> Listen <laughs> they are not, and they, uh, and we're gonna have to get that together because a lot is uh, relying on them and their play. And yes, we do have Superman. And again, the game plan all season has been Lamar save us and or Lamar please. And that's exactly what he's done. But to expect that out your quarterback every week is just the same as like when you have a good defense and you're expecting the defense to carry the offense. It's the exact same on the inverse. Like we cannot be allowing people to do this to us on defense. That's ridiculous. Yeah, as as much as I would love love Tate Adams here, I, I think they need you need to go get a cornerback, dog. Dude, we can't survive with, with with I mean Nate may be good eventually, but he's a rookie and he's he's gonna have his, his thing and we we know what Brandon Stevens is and Marlon Humphrey's old. So they need to go get a cornerback bad or it's, it's gonna be like this. Once you have a, a, a decent quarterback with a decent receiver, you don't they only have to be above average. Like you see what happened when they superstars like the Bengals have at them at the what position. If you have above average, they're gonna get you gonna get taken advantage of. That's what's just gonna happen. I mean, they the secondary has been bad for a couple years now. I mean, Matt, I mean, Mike got it together um, before he left, but the same holes that were happening two, three years ago, they they back open now. Yeah, I'm about to say, so my confidence meet. I'm at like a seven and a half, eight. I mean, you got the Commanders coming up at home. Then you got to go to the Bucks on Monday night. Then the Browns on the road. So that's your next three games. All three of them very winnable. Um, so I think you just gotta take it a game at a time. That that Bucks game is gonna be tough if, if the secondary gonna play like this. <laughs> yeah, my dad. We can definitely beat. Don't get me wrong, but yeah, 
we we can't allow Mike Evans and Chris Godwin to do what. Listen, I might have PTSD at this point. Like Jamar Chase shit is crazy. No, he really did. He's been doing that since yeah, he, really, yeah, and he and he does that to us a lot. Yeah, he yeah. does that to us. He a Raven killer. Yeah, that, yeah I guess he's the new AJ Green. Yeah, it's AJ Green on steroids. Well, AJ Green, used right? To, AJ Green, AJ Green, used to Green. He used to he's in y'all season. Like AJ Green used to do it at the like. Damn, you really just playoff hopes gone. Um, Brandon Stevens, we we spoke about him. I asked for a reason if this is a contract year. Is this his last year in Baltimore? I mean, they may give him a. I do. You want it to be? I know y'all probably. I mean, this, time, this, no. I mean, if you're gonna bring, if you're gonna, if you're gonna bring in a number one, he can be our number two. But for us to, I think they try to mold him. Even I was on the he's the number one cornerback path, but no, he's not. And I mean, if they're gonna bring in somebody else, but he they can't he can't be he can't be the the guy that's sticking their number one receiver. It just doesn't. Work. It's not gonna work. Yeah, Yo, you, you you never want to have your your. Um cornerback be one of your leading tacklers in a game um i don't want my cornerback to be a tackler i want him to be a shutdown artist you know and he had nine tackles yesterday so that just tells you what his job was you know it was a lot of trailing running after people and trying to tackle them 20 30 yards down the field um the thing about brandon is he does some he does what he does do well he does really well but his it's just not enough of things that he does well to cover up the things that he doesn't do well. And teams are, aren't stupid and they're taking advantage. And we have this false confidence that we can put him in one-on-one coverage or, you know what I mean? He can guard, you know, team's best receivers. And clearly that's not his game. So we're going to have to, we're talking about scheme and strategy. We're going to have to figure out ways in which, um, we can mix up our coverages to allow, um, some of these cornerbacks to have some help, but you know what I mean? When you do that, you got to also worry about the seam of Roquan Smith guarding tight ends and, and guarding big wide receivers in the slot. You know, uh, just coverage in general has been bad. So it might be scheme, Keith, to your point about or because um, we're not maybe we're not putting these players in the best position to succeed. Uh, they can't be this bad. Like last year, we saw them play at a, at a higher level. And I'm talking about the individual players I've named. We've seen those particular players play at a higher level in, in a in a different scheme, different coaching system. So maybe it's maybe a strategy. I don't know. Did we, we talk about or yet? Not yet. Not not, not, okay. not let pause, but if since 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 we're here, uh I don't want to say place blame, but uh is it questions about him five weeks in? And if so, how big are those questions? I mean, I think it has to be questions. Um like you said in the question, like you said in the question, your offense has the most points in the league right now, and yet you still in these these tight games like you were yesterday, giving up big plays. Like these these aren't methodical drives; these are chunk plays. So two to chase yesterday, big chunk plays. Like, and you giving it up. You gave it up against the Raiders. You gave up chunk plays against the Chiefs with Worthy. Like it's you giving up too many big plays, explosive plays, and like that that. 31 other teams lose yesterday, probably. Maybe 30 other teams lose that game yesterday, probably. The way that the defense was playing with a regular quarterback, nobody was winning that game yesterday. So a lot of it got to fall on or I really don't know what to make out of him um, other than it's his first time calling plays. But I can't even give him that bail because Zach Robinson in uh, Atlanta – he had never been a play caller his whole entire coaching career. So game one, week one against the Steelers, he had a horrible game plan in the show. What did he do? He adjusted. He evolved. He grew. He learned from mistakes. Didn't repeat them the next week. They said, oh, you know, uh, you don't have Kirk Cousins running play action and playing under center. What is he doing now? Under center, running play action. So I say that to say Zach or I mean it's been five weeks. Where when are we going to see adjustments? When are we going to see you learn and grow and evolve from mistakes? I mean, we can't keep having these splash plays occur week after week after week. It happened in the Cowboys game, too. The only time it didn't happen was against the Bills, and they don't have any explosive players. You know what I mean? Not one. <laughs> so, I mean, James Cook, if you want to talk running backs, I'm talking about weapons, though. They don't have any explosions, but you know, people like Devontae Adams, Brock Bowers. Uh, Xavier Worthy, uh, you know what I mean? Uh, 
who did we play Rasheed last? Rice. Week? Rasheed Rice, uh, Jamar Chase, T. Higgins. You know what I mean? Anytime there's somebody on the other side of the field that comes with some pedigree, we seem to have problems with them. And that's the opposite of what we want. We want our defensive coordinator to take the bigger the, the big players out of the game plan. I'd rather I'd rather somebody else beat me than Jamar Chase put up 202 on me. Yeah, and I mean and I think he's still like you said, Zach Taylor, he caught on. I think I think or he still don't have a feel. He don't know when to be aggressive or when not to be aggressive. And it might, and also it might be some personnel issues. I, like I said, I don't, these cornerbacks, man, they they, they got to improve their cornerback run. We thought it was a strength, but it, it's not. It's definitely not. They they can't defend. They can't. They really can't. It, it, it was ugly. Marcus Williams is giving us some of the worst safety play in the league. Yeah, he. Yeah, I, t- I said Geno Stone the trail technique. Marcus Williams is the tra- he is the trail definition of trail technique. Har- Harbaugh says he he feels uh, Marcus is on the on the cusp or on the brink of, of making several big plays. I'm like nigga, where <laughs> he played he played too, he played too much football not to make he paid too much money he playing too much you know too many snaps to be on the brink. If he's going to do that, he needs to make the plays. The right? only make, thing make the br- he on the he on the verge of is the the, the great finesse. That's it. But that's an aside of all that paper for mm-hmm. subpar play. And that's again, it. and again, it goes back to Orr versus McDonald because McDonald, I mean, he had Geno Stone looking all world, right. Marcus Williams looking all world. All these players, Brandon Stevens had us thinking that he could be a, a physical shutdown corner. Uh, all these players look a lot better under a different scheme than they do currently. And that's a problem. So part of coaching is not just your philosophy, but how do you bend your philosophy with your personnel? You have to coach your players, not, you know, this grandiose um, uh, idea of what you want on, on, on the football field. You got to coach the people that are in your room and, and get the most out of them. So that's that's Zach's next challenge. I'm trying to be fair and give them bail. But it's hard. It's very hard. Yeah, I'm about to say Rex Ryan been saying since week one that Zach or coaching out of another man's playbook. So. I think part of that is Zach on that. Like you said, he's going to have to find his own niche. He's going to have to find what works for him. What worked for Mike McDonald and his calls last year don't work for this defense. It's not the same defense. There's no feel. I agree. I agree with that. He has no feel. It's like, why are you blitzing in it? This is not a blitzing situation. Why are you dropping back right now? This is not a drop back situation. That's that's what I got yesterday. Like, you, he he don't understand what part of the game, what part of the field he's in. He just, I think it's, and like you said, we're going to give him a little bit of bail because it's going to come with experience, but it, it do seem like, Somebody else is calling his place, man. Yeah, and 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 that's the issue with um, this that I have is, you know, usually when you try to take somebody else's playbook or somebody else's principles and and grow up on them or reuse them, they're not as good. The results aren't as good as the original person. You know what I mean? How many times have we seen like a Patriots coach? You know what I mean? Learn the Patriot the way trip. and learn the under trip. Belichick. And then they take those principles and they just, just doesn't translate. Um, in this situation, he's going to have to have his own principles, have his own ideas, and they're going to have to be high level ideas. You know, everybody can have an idea. They're going to have to be great ideas and they're going to have to be able to be executed. Um, it was always a risk uh, hiring somebody, not from within, but but someone that just wasn't uh, the resume wasn't as as is like somebody like Anthony Weaver, I think was a little bit more ready to be a DC. Um, but again, you know, he got poached by Miami and there were several other coaches that got poached. So it was that goal wasn't like the first choice, but you know, it was a great story as far as promoting from within former players, so on and so forth. But that honeymoon phase is over, bro. This defense can't be getting worked like this. I mean, I mean, it's nasty. It's disgusting. Yeah, and you talk about Lamar Jr., who everybody call him now, coming in Sunday. That boy bad. Like you, 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 you can't. He and he can get outside the pocket and create with his feet, unlike Barrows. So it may get it may get ugly soon with with, Dan, with Daniels coming. If they play that same type of defense, it may get ugly early. See, Daniels is the example of why I can't be. I don't be accepting mid at quarterback. Like Jay, do y'all see how elite that kid is, bro? Yeah, he's he tough. He's special. In five games, I mean, God. Like, bro, he's but then you know, he got the commanders the on one. We yeah. said he was the top pick on here. <laughs> Shoot, we ain't drinking Caleb Kool Aid respectfully. Caleb been Caleb playing better. He had a good game yesterday. He, 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 he played the Panthers, yeah. He played the Panthers, but he looked a lot better. 
He got a three and two team compared to Jaden's four and one. So those those two rookies are, are hey Patriots might have to start having conversations at this point. But I think that's a different are. convo. Yeah, yeah. Um, speaking of quarterbacks, y'all quarterback, Mister Two Time, is he on his way to a third MVP? I mean, it's going to depend on the team success. I mean, I think Lamar's going to continue to play this level. I think he's seeing the field differently. I think he's evolved as a as a player. Um, as long as he got protection, he's a he's a great passer. So it's going to really depend on team success. But I don't see why not. Um, his stats this year are better than his stats through through the first um, first five games last year. So I don't see why he wouldn't. It's going. To, I think it's going to come down to the team success what the team do. Um, but he's going to keep playing at this level. He's playing at an amazing level right now. I think he deserved it last year, but the way he's playing this year, he deserves it more through five games than he deserved it last year, if that makes sense. Like, um, the defense isn't the same type of defense. You can't say the O-line is the same type of O-line that he had. Um, Honestly, I think he had more weapons last year. Um, And he's he's playing just more confident. It's just something about him post that contract where he's just able to just be more – uh relaxed uh you know he like people don't notice stuff like this but he comes out with and wears his fronts when he plays football now like before he was company man and now he gets to like let just like let some of that stuff go and just be himself and you know look at how he how he interacts with his teammates nowadays when when they do something wrong he gets and they he gets and they stuff about it and it's not in a bad way it's leadership he, he's found his voice and and 185 million dollars that'll help you find your boys. <laughs> if I was quiet before, I ain't quiet now, homie. You know what I mean? And and but it's helping the team. I bring that up to say it's helping the team. He's keeping people more accountable. He's playing um uh, more confident and more assured of himself. And I've never seen him play quarterback like this. So if he's won it before, he has a pretty compelling case through five games right now. Yeah, no, I agree. I, I think Lamar feel empowered and as he should. And I think that loss last year at home. Uh, the Kansas City, I think that dwelling on that over the offseason, you can tell the way he's come out. Like, even it was one play yesterday, they needed a first down. What he do? Put his foot in the ground and got it. Like, he, he's just got a different determination to him. Even calling Harbaugh out after the Dallas game and Monkey, we got to be more aggressive. Um, it was a time where people said the Ravens was down 10, 14 points. What was they going to do? Run their way into the game? What did Lamar do yesterday? He threw a, he threw a win. He threw, the, he threw the Ravens into the game yesterday with his arm. So I think the only thing stopping him from a potential three-time MVP is voter fatigue. Like, they didn't see him do it over and over, and it's like, it's somebody else's turn. You know how that go. Um, but outside of that, I mean, he probably arguably got the player of the year, and I don't know what could top that at this point. because He's making a player of the year play every week. Every year. Yo, even every, the head thing week, early in the game. Right. <laughs> when he when, when he threw the incomplete yeah, pass, but he threw the head fake, and the, the two defenders went running mm-hmm. north, and he was going the other way. Yep, threw it out of bounds. Like it. that's a sack. Highlight plays on incomplete passes. He tough. And it's and, uh, before we wrap up because you know we got Steelers football to talk, but um, uh, just thinking about through five weeks, who would be like my top three or top four? No order. I'm thinking um, we got Lamar in there. I'm going to say two names that might sound disgusting, but like Jared Goff, Baker Mayfield, I think you got to put them in in, in conversations just because of how they're playing football right now. Um, you know, Jared Goff, I think he had a game. He, 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 he had, had a perfect game. Yeah, we like, talked about that last week. He had a perfect game. Yeah, it's insane. Perfect and, game. And, Baker, and Baker Mayfield is down there doing amazing things right now and things that nobody thought a Todd Bowles team post – Tom Brady would be doing the last couple of years. So you got to give him his respect there. And then also Jaden Daniels. I got a hey, four and one the way he's playing. And he ain't it ain't just a phony four and one. Like he out there making plays. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> yeah. yeah, I'd agree. The quarterback play from uh your usual top five or whatever you want to say. It ain't really MVP worthy right now. It, they may turn it up. It's still early, but for right now, as Mike Tomlin would say. Lamar has pole position. He's so, what was your thoughts on the game yesterday? I mean, I look. I'm not as far as from an AFC North perspective. Magic, I mean, no, 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 Like, what's your thoughts I mean, on us and the Bengals from yesterday? Stomp, stomping on the Bengals is, is is cool. Give them 
look, I want them out the way. They've owned you over the last couple of years. Say let's go. We, hey, let's work together on the Bengals. You gonna ask me what I want and then say they own? Yeah, my well, bad. You right. You right. You right. Well, guess what? You always bring me to this. <laughs> Who owns you? <laughs> you won't answer that. You look down at your sheet. Fifteen, <laughs> my homes. No, 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 no. This is North Talk. No, no, no. This North Talk. This North Talk. You didn't beat him more than you beat us. Talk your shit, go fight back. <laughs> <laughs> the fuck Purple but no i'm not one of them guys that disrespect lamar on his arm he's been able to throw for a while now i saw that coach game what was that two years ago yeah, yeah, yeah I, was, I, I saw that coach game three like that was yeah because yeah Top cause line. even in the league no more so yeah so I, I saw that game i know i know what he can do y'all just gotta let him do it the thing with him and this is in the future i know what he is in the regular season like he has to be that in the playoffs. I like if you get down ten in, if if you get down ten in the playoffs, can Tell he me. do this? That'll shut everybody up. Like I was thinking about this at work, like just to myself. Like if right now he's he's on your Mount Rushmore of Ravens. Period. The only thing that's stopping him is the ring. But talent wise, what he can do, like when I saw that play, but he going out of bounds. I just felt bad for the defense. Like, what the fuck are you supposed to do with that, yo? Mm. What are you supposed to do with that? They did everything right. We really I mean, they let him throw the ball. He spread the ball out. Nine different receivers with the reception yesterday. One like, of these days, one of these days, he's in his seventh season. One of these days, we're gonna be we're gonna be talking about where, where well, does he rank all time. We, but he, we, we he gotta win. He gotta win. Yeah, we started yeah, this show with the only thing that stop him from being there is yeah. that ring. And, and I, I think at this point. Else. And even after with no ring and two MVPs, I'm about, yeah, I'm thinking at this it, point you got a top ten his ass, even if he top don't, 15, something. Even if he don't, just with the eye test, what he's able to do and how he came in the league, we're gonna, we gonna get him a ring. Yeah, yeah. I hope not. <laughs> I, I, I forgot. I, I thought not. you was wearing purple. Chill. I thought we was together. Chill, bro. chill, chill. This is a Nike hoodie. <laughs> forgot. This is Damn. Nike. This is Nike. Big ass Steelers not, background in the back. <laughs> yeah, never forget, never forget. But speaking of big ass Steelers in let's the go. background, let's go to commercial break. And it's my turn. When I want some sports news, Nitty Gritty is definitely who I'm tuning into, man. They show up each week with that uncut, that raw, that unfiltered sports news. They say the things that everyone else wishes that they can say, but they can't. Every Tuesday and Saturday, I am locked into my favorite sports show, Nitty Gritty. Nitty gritty, the best show out right now. Tune in and listen, stupid. It's getting ugly behind this curtain, but we we shall go. Pittsburgh drops their second in a row, losing the, the Dallas Cowboys at home 20 to 17. Dak Prescott. 352 yards, two touchdowns, two interceptions. Justin Fields, 131 yards, two touchdowns. Um, it's a lot of blame to go around. Nobody is absolved. I'll start with the defense. Mainly because coming into this game, every everybody knew. This was no secret. They cannot run the ball. I stated this needed to be a bounce-back game for them to kind of get their confidence back and dominate them, stop them. Dottle had 80, 87 yards. Now, granted, I think they averaged as a team 3.5 yards a carry, but Dottle should not be nowhere north of 60 yards on your side. Not when you spend that much money on that side of the ball, not when you walk around saying the vaunted Steelers defense, right? That, that shouldn't happen. My main issue with this defense, and this is the second week in a row, is the communication. It's guys on that defense that do not know this defense. That is a problem, especially when you play an exotic zone that requires you to pass off coverage. Who's you got guys out. Beanie Bushup, 31. He's an undrafted rookie, <laughs> undrafted free agent rookie, right? And he's only playing because we, we signed Cam Sutton. He was already coming with a suspension. But the reason why I'm, I'm, your, I'm in a game sign guy, he comes back after the bye. Okay, okay. But the reason why Omar and, and Mike Tomlin they got to take some blame 
when you signed Cam Sutton, you knew he was getting suspended for what he was involved in. So for Beanie Bishop to be your backup, he's playing man and everybody else is playing zone. On that completion to the tight end, he's playing man. Back to the defense. And and Mink is rolling over the top. Like He has that guy that he's covering. You got to break off to the tight end. Tight end wide open. Big completion. When Dak found that, D- Dak abused that. And I'm, hey, they get paid to play d- offense too. But this is the second week in a row where Beanie Bishop is playing man and everybody else is playing zone. And his man is open because he's taking somebody else where he needs to pass off. Dante Jackson and Minka Fitzpatrick, y'all are vets. Now, Dante Jackson, you're new to this defense, but y'all shouldn't be having communication problems. It's too much of that. It's too much of that. And I'll speak on this later because it was a lot of identity talk. But we know how the Steelers need to win, how Mike Tomlin wants to win. It's from the defensive side of the ball, limiting yardage. Now, the points weren't high, 20 points. Dallas was a, uh, what a, what were they, fifth in point scored? So you held them to 20 points. But it's a lot of yards, a lot of yards, a lot of opportunities. You're getting thin on the edge. Pause. Herbig went down. Leal went down. And the only thing that's going to hurt is TJ, because now you can triple. You can just send the whole line over there if you're not going to blitz. So now we're talking about adjustments. Are you going to blitz? How are you, how are you going to create pressure? Because at some point, you can't leave – quarterbacks like Dak just back there with nothing but time to pick you apart in a zone that you're having miscommunications in. Now, I say all of that. The defense still got three turnovers. The defense still got three turnovers. Dallas went into the fourth quarter with 13 points. This is a game. Six. I'm sorry. Six. Six. That is a game that Pittsburgh should just pencil in as a win. And before I get off the defense, I also think Patrick Queen is one of the guys that don't know this defense. Dog. Come on. Come Inside on. agent, baby. Come on. It's starting to look like that. It's starting to look like that. Like, yo, you're a different vet. Different scheme, but he's just not good. It's he's a different scheme. Good. And he don't look comfortable. He don't look comfortable. He's and not, the main reason he don't look comfortable. He is not like, sideline to sideline. He, he can go nah, forward very well. Exactly. He can't go sideline side to sideline. He don't look comfortable, and I thought that he would have learned from last year because he was good. I thought he would have added that to his game. But this, the role that we have him in is not his role. Yeah, he can't He can't get out there like Joey Porter and all the other yeah, guys. Yeah. Backers can't. Y'all need Brian to Shea, yeah, like, yeah, can't do, He can't do that. He's not in that elk. He's more like a Landon Roberts. Like, they're the same linebacker to me. But the problem is we brought Queen here to be the coverage guy, to be the on-ball backer. So that's a problem. He he, I've seen him be good in coverage once in these five weeks. He he has to play better. This this Steelers defense has been we, – we do okay with the turnovers and uh, we limit people points, but you can get yards on us. When we were at our greatest, it was because we had dominant linebackers. Like we haven't had that in a while. I was hoping that Patrick Crean could could have changed that, but it's not looking like that. Um, but I left off saying the six points, turnovers, the offense, another slow start. We haven't scored the first half touchdown all year. We haven't and, scored, and none of the five games. None of the five games have we, and that we, and that we're scoring touchdowns. But you have to score them early. You have to score them early. Mike Tomlin comes out here and he he preaches, hey, we got to get off the fastest starts. We got to get off the fastest starts. And I know what some of the talk is. They, they don't trust Justin Fields. You don't. My, and we'll talk about the quarterback change and potential. I don't even think that. I think this is a philosophy thing. It can't be the philosophy anymore. If Justin Fields is going to fuck up, let him fuck up. Yeah, you can't run the ball on third and eight, Scott. I agree. You can't do that. You, 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 you got to do that. I don't care. Though. I've seen them do it with Kenny. I've seen Mitch throw five interceptions in a game. You trusted him to just sling the shit all over the place? Do I be wrong saying these look like Kenny Pickett games? Because I've been saying that for a couple of weeks now. These look like Kenny Pickett. Like, well, y'all had the game one yesterday. The only difference, your defense was getting stops. They the can't get a stop score. now. The why, 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 why do you think they're not letting them let them letting it go? 
I, that's why earlier, Nick, when I said I was blaming Trump. <laughs> why? Because he asked Nick. No, have you, have you not seen Chicago? No. It's not. <laughs> again, last week I said I ain't care. When you look yesterday, and there's a lot of issues going on with us that I'm not used to. You got to get used to these things when the Hall of Fame goes away. So now you got turmoil and shit in week five. But when you look at, was he perfect yesterday? No, he wasn't. He missed a lot of reads, trying to do too much. I think a lot of this rush shit is getting in his head. Yesterday, he didn't look like he was playing with confidence like he had been prior to. Because he didn't look like he was playing with confidence. Because the defense was like, but y'all putting a lot of pressure on that defense. And then it is. It, it's a lot of pressure on that defense. Like you spoke about your offense compared to you. It's a lot of pressure on this defense. Look, yeah. these offenses get paid to play too. They're going to give up some yards. They're going to give up some points. But the offense has to be able to fight back. You cannot fight back when it's third and five and you tossing it to a guy who was teaching middle school last that's, year. That's an yeah, I feel like Tom to be thinking it's like 06, 07. Like he got Paolo Milo and Ryan. And, Clark, and, like, and Nick, that was the team main is reason. score more than 20. That's the main reason why I was blaming Tom. Is he a good coach? Yeah. But for him to preach living in your fears, he's too conservative. He coaches like he knows he's not going to get fired. On, on the flip side, just an alternative viewpoint. Um, could you say 17 years of not having a losing se- season, he's earned the right to kind of evaluate who, he, what, what, a person can do as far as how much he should trust him or not. Now, mind you, that was a good point about Mitch Trubisky. And, but I, I feel like they had training wheels on them too, so to speak, maybe Mitch less so because he was more of a veteran than a Kenny. Um, but you know, 38, 35, whatever you, you can't run the ball. And we criticized the Ravens for doing that a couple of shows ago. But my question to you is like, maybe they're conservative because this is the first time Justin Fields has played a winning brand of football. Got to remember, in four years in Chicago, he didn't have a winning record at all. So the fact that he came into this game three and one, you can you really argue with how they're using him? I feel like part of it is protecting him because people were saying he he was this new, improved, changed quarterback because T.J. Watt is amazing. It's just different when T.J. Watt's not amazing. It's going to be times where you, you got to just let him be a man. I saw a game where Kenny threw the ball 50 times in his first. Matter of fact, his first start against Buffalo, he threw the ball 52 times. Kenny about to be out the league because of that. But that was a game. Too much. I mean, I'm not saying 50 times. Not at all. It's plays and it's throws that you know Justin can make. And and, I mean, he showed it a little bit in Chicago. He had a lot of he had a lot of bad, but he flashed. And what he was asked to do. these Tyrod Taylor did too. Be a backup. Hey, it's a lot of people that flash. <laughs> Flashing ain't like get you. No, get no, you no, 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 no. Justin <laughs> had. I need, a, I need a long like, flame, not a flash. Justin had flashed with like, oh, oh, <laughs> shit. If he, we can all agree. Sometimes he didn't have the best coaching. He didn't have the best situation. So if this is going to be the brand new start, and you get into a game, this is feel of the game. This is feel of the game. Now that run game ain't working. That run game was not working. Najee was on the sidelines a lot. Like somebody to stay else. on the sidelines, so. like somebody. No, he needs not, to stay on the sideline at all times. Hey, if your argument is Jalen Warren and Cordero Patterson, cool, but them dudes Jerry wasn't playing. Jean. Oh no, not yesterday. I'm just saying. No, I'm not, 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 other guys, no, yesterday, I'm saying. Totally. but when, but when, if you can, if, but when Cordero Patterson other and Jalen Warren come back, oh, they Shampkins, need to get we had Shampkins yesterday. Aaron Shampkins and Jonathan Ward. Jonathan Najee, Ward. Najee really no. need to be the number three when they come back. So he, he, he's not he hurt. He's terrible. He got no, hurt he yesterday, hurt. but he wasn't hurt prior to he, he was missing a lot of snaps prior to him going to the sidelines. He came the back. boy can't run. That's what yeah. he's doing. Can you can you talk to us about the Najee and George Pickens snap decisions? Because I mean, if you're telling me he they're not hurt. Oh shit. Let's go ahead. <laughs> Early in the year, I don't know if y'all remember. I I not so much Najee, but George. I came on here and said, yo, it's a lot of times George not on the field. A lot of times, especially in that Denver game, you saw a lot of Scotty Miller. It's like, yo, what am I seeing Scotty Miller for? <laughs> um, George Pickens came into this league with not even off the field issues. Just he's a difficult person. But the thing that makes Mike Tomlin Mike Tomlin is his ability to deal with quote unquote difficult people. Is George per, uh, Pickens perfect? No. 
what he displayed yesterday is unacceptable. When he gets in his feelings, he cannot let it affect his game, and he always does. When he gets in his feelings, lack of effort follows. Lack of effort is not going to fix this. Like, you're just making their job easier. In the first two years, it was cool, but now you're getting to the point where Van Jefferson logs 55 snaps out of 58 offensive snaps, and George Pickens had 34. George Pickens ran. Not only did he have 34 snaps, he ran 20 routes. He's supposed to be your number one, and he ran 20 routes. So when I say just, uh, Justin Fields wasn't perfect yesterday, he wasn't. But you took away his favorite guy, and now he's throwing back shoulder fades to mm -hmm. Van Jefferson. So you think Tom? So you think Tom should discipline him at a different at a different time? Yeah. If it's up to me, and let me keep play the clip. We just okay. wanted to kind of minimize his, his reps in an effort to get more productivity. You know, we're just trying to rep manage in terms of the totality of the big picture. Um, he wasn't less of a focal point in terms of our intentions of what we wanted to do offensively, but we did want to cut his reps a little bit in an effort to get higher quality play uh, just in general. <laughs> <laughs> hey, hold on, hold on, hold on, Scott, before you go off. Yeah. yeah, you didn't you didn't feel what he was saying? If hypothetical, well, not hypothetical. I read between the lines. I read if, between. If, the if you're lines. saying that he wasn't giving full effort, and he was pouting and being an asshole. But this, yeah, I want people that's going to give effort on the field. But it started it, it, way. It, it, before. I mean, but my thing is, why not just say I benched him? That he's he's he benched him. That's all he had to say. Just yeah. say that. That's all he had to say. Because George is the type that'll meet him in the locker room. <laughs> well, <laughs> I'm hey, he probably scared of George. Got, <laughs> something got come to a head. Mike wear the black air forces. Hey, last week. George had seven for 113. And then this week, he started the game off, and it was like, yo, where's George at? Before the lack of effort. The lack of effort got worse because, like I said, hey, Connor Hayward had a deep shot in the first quarter on the first drive. Yeah, Whoa. So you, Connor Hayward is crazy. So you don't think Pickens, like, you don't think, like, why don't y'all get him? Is this an Arthur Smith thing? Like, why isn't Pickens touching the ball? On the first on the first drive, like why is it taking him it's, until the second quarter? Ooh, to, ooh, ooh, to get I it have the answer. Nick, why is Deontay? Nick. Why was Deontay Johnson complaining last year? They can't blame it on Arthur Smith. It's maybe it's mid at quarterback. I don't know though. I don't. Nah, I can't even say that. They've had a connection. They've had a connection. Yeah, I, I thought so too. They've had a connection. Him and George have a connection. So oh, what the hell in five doing? games, see, they've he, he's had seven for 85, four for 29, seven for 57, 11 for 113. Oh, excuse me, let me do that over six for 85, two for 229, five for 57, seven for 113, and three for 26. So now that 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 Denver game, 29 Denver but, game, though, but he, the Denver game, up. that that was that was past certain, but that was a different kind of game. You also yeah. dealing with a lot of plays that's coming off the board because of self inflicted wounds. Yeah, no, I'm not. I'm not, I'm not even so questioning this time. Like they have a. I don't know. I. I. That's why I want to blame Tomlin because I've seen, I've seen Arthur Smith have a dominant wide receiver on the outside. Now, granted, yeah, this run was, game ain't helping his scheme out like what he wants to do. This run game yeah, ain't helping what he wants to do to play action, but. No, nah, I, I agree with what you're saying, but you can do all that, but you can't fumble against the Colts. Like you can't. You can. Be the be the yeah, lockdown problem and all that, but yeah, he's not fumbling. Like yeah. as much all of them shit. Ab 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 wasn't fumbling games away. No, 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 no. If, no. if George don't fumble the ball, y'all probably beat the Colts. Ab so was like, a, a total different type of hit. It's like I, 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 I think don't I, talk to the media post game. Like that's. Not I, I think yeah. I think I think George need to let his career develop a little bit. Like I I don't want him to change because I think it makes him a, a better football player. But I think he needed to let his career develop. I think he he his attitude is. Is overcoming his game. It's a little bit too early. It's a little bit too early. He's not developed. I mean, you gotta get your career established a little bit. But I want him to change though because it is. It makes him him. It makes him him. And quiet is kept. Reeling in a little bit. Quiet is kept. Tomlin's strategy almost worked. They, you guys, were literally one fourth down away from walking away from last night's victory. I mean, game with a victory. Yeah, and that's the thing that's so with all with all the shit on the offense, we find a way to score in the second half. We have to find a way to score earlier, especially when you get two interceptions in the red zone and then you get a blocked field goal. No points came from that. No points came from that. You got to help your defense out because they are getting gashed, but they're finding a way to make splash plays to get you the ball back in a position to put some points on the board, and it's just not, it's just not happening. 
and Justin Fields spoke the identity. Somebody asked him about what's the identity of this team, and he said, we have an identity, and then he proceeded to not know what the identity is. Because we, I, I don't know what the identity is. If I mean, you, you know what I did. You don't. You don't have identity when your team don't really know who the starting quarterback is. That's the problem. That's that's the problem. Number here. one, number that's one. Problem, yeah. Number, two, you put money into this offensive line, and look, I know the offensive line coach's name. That's a problem. I don't want to know his name. Pat Meyer needs to be better. It's a reason why he gets fired everywhere he goes. And the offensive line, when he leaves, gets better. Something got to give. If you came into this season wanting to run the ball and play defense, well, the run game isn't materializing like you want to. Now you have to pivot. Now you have to pivot. You can't coach this game like, all right, offense, don't mess up and let the defense do what they do. I, I That can't happen. So, yes. I, I was about to say, I think Keys alluded to it, but do you change QBs once Russ is healthy? Um. If you can guarantee me that you're going to call the game different, sure. But I don't think you are. <clears throat> so, 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 so that yeah, third and eight, my bad, Nick, go ahead. No, go ahead, because you were in the middle. Go ahead. I was just about to say that third and eight, you don't think Russ is throwing? You don't think that's a throwing? That's a passing down? I think that's a philosophy that is uh, being had on purpose. They would never do that philosophy with Big Ben. But my question well, is – No, no, no. Come on now. Yeah. Yeah, no. They Ben wouldn't allow that. I, wouldn't I would never that. do that philosophy with anyone. Not I wouldn't do That's that. With what I'm, I don't Tyler care Huntley. who the I wouldn't do that with Tyler Huntley. <laughs> Come on, yo, it's third and eight. Josh Johnson, like you nigga, it's third down. <laughs> Show That's, me, bro. It's he's so conservative now that if you can guarantee me that you're gonna let Russ run run this offense and 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 throw the ball. Not 50 times, not 40 times, but come on now. It's 2024. I, I just wanted to be fair to like y'all defense, like. And just be fair to, like, the offense, too. Like, yo, you guys had everything working for you guys. You guys won the t- turnover battle 3-0. to zero. Mm-hmm. Well, Pat ta- fumbled, but, yeah, 3-1. to one. What, what was Still. The la- yeah. Still. What was that? Was that – were you talking about the last fumble, like the last play of the game fumble, or – I gotta remember because I was watching the highlights. That let that late start fuck me up. I ain't gonna lie. Um, yeah. but yeah, we got more turnovers than them. I, I think I think that fumble was the final play. Um, okay. Yeah. Uh, two of the tur- takeaways were in the red zone. You guys blocked the field goal. Dallas committed eleven penalties for eighty-seven yards, and not to mention that Dallas's defense was re- was without uh, Michael Parsons yeah. and Demarcus Lawrence. So. Despite yeah. all of those advantages, you guys couldn't score enough to win. And it was only 20, 20 points came at the final buzzer. Dang, darn right. near. Like that's what I'm saying. That's they what didn't, I'm saying. they had they, they it's, came it's, into the fourth quarter with six points. That that that, that Man, I watched happen. Jamar Chase put up six points in two By seconds. Itself. Yeah, I know. That can't happen. <laughs> it can't happen. And it's so frustrating because you see that yo, defenses are not holding teams to six points. They just don't do it. I don't care who's a, they just don't do it. So when that happens, you got to be able to help them out on the offensive side. You're not doing yourself no fake. Hey, if you don't trust them, then yes, make the change if you don't trust them. But when Russ comes in, let let him let him cook, like he likes to say. Good point about Dottle in the run game, even though like their run game has been trending up. It's been trending up very slightly. So yeah, yeah. that was a shock to see them being able to do that. But why are they able to stick with the run? Because the game is close going into the fourth quarter. If, if y'all was up 14, 17 points the way y'all should have been, Dallas is not able to run the ball. And then you putting all that pressure on Dak Prescott. And you saw what he was yeah. doing with pressure. Every time he had pressure, he was throwing an interception or fumbling. So that game should have been close. It shouldn't just, have been close, and that's y'all why. Y'all got to say more complimentary. Yeah. Help the defense out. Yo, Any, if y'all had three turnovers yesterday, y'all might have scored 60. Yo, but it shouldn't have been that close. But I, I mean, <laughs> like, I don't think it should have been that close. It should have been that close in Dallas' favor. Like, they should have – they totally was picking you apart. I think the turnovers wasn't nothing y'all defensively. He just made a bad decision. That was just a bad, a completely bad read. Yeah, he made two – yeah, he made it two wasn't, It wasn't bad. It wasn't that y'all was – they Steelers outran y'all by like 400. Things. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The zone makes it like, it, yeah. they should have beat y'all. Unless Zach Dak do them dumb things, they they beat y'all by like few touchdowns. But that, the zone makes you do was offense. Just that that's the zone so makes man- you see things. That's what's that, so mad yeah, about man. y'all defense because there's a lot of teams that should beat y'all by two, three, 
touchdowns. I say it every week, but when yeah. they don't do it, it's because y'all out here like doing amazing things on D. Sack fumbles. Yeah, you sack know, fumbles the things in, that you in the red zone. That's what sack they did. fumble in the red like, zone. That first sack fumble, I said, here we go. It was setting up. long day tomorrow. It was setting up, and then, <laughs> then he throws the pick. I'm like, side. then they play yeah. renegade, and I'm like, uh oh. It's scary now. I, 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 I think we get. I mean, we 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 love the turn. We we get lost. Like it's not really that good. Like you, you still let, they convert like seventy percent third down. Like now, that wasn't. Oh, it wasn't that point. good. It wasn't that but good. This is the y'all second. Just, y'all just got y'all turnovers. But if you look at if you break down the game, really game, y'all. No, defense, this is this is the second like a lot. The second straight week where third and long. I think the league is averaging twenty nine percent on third and long, and then these last two weeks we've given up fifty nine percent. Yeah, like it's bad. Yeah, y'all it's a problem. Third down 15. defense is terrible. It's, it's a problem. 15, so 60%. Yeah. Y'all yeah, was three for 12 on third down. We can't get off the field. I think they had like over north of 300 yards on third down. We had 229. You can't lose that battle. That's not winning football. Again, when you're three for 12 on third down, the defense just stays on the field. So they can't and that what the led to that, that last drive? Now, I've seen just... years of Kyle Bowler. I know how great defense, bad offense oh, works. Yeah. I've seen years of it. Yeah. So I'm, I'm just telling you from experience. TJ Gas, TJ Gas. Not to mention that everybody's gone. TJ Gas, you can double triple him. He and the he played a whole fourth yeah. quarter, so it, it's it's not complimentary. It it it. I don't know what you do with Pickens. Do you trade him? I mean, I don't know if you trade. If him, you're I, the I, front I office, think that, I think that I mean you can't trade him now because you're because you trade Deontay Johnson. So that'll that, yeah. that'll be malpractice. So you can't trade him. But oh, I so. think that is an option if they get somebody else, bring somebody else in. So I could think you're trading. not going to trade him, play him, find him. Back to your point, Keys, about me saying he should have been disciplined different. Do you want to win? I don't want to see Van Jefferson running back shoulder fit. I don't. No, I agree with you. I, I agree with you. you There's other ways to. Yeah, to yeah, I agree with you. But this Romeo Dobbs skipped practice because he was upset. yes, I saw he that. was upset with his role and his coach sat his ass down for the whole game. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, that's what you do. Or don't you play him. T- yeah, don't or play don't him at play all. Him. But don't do it in the middle of the game when, <laughs> your, office look, when your office look like that. You can't do because we need it. Yeah, don't pick and choose when to play him. Yeah, like, him in the face and throw a bomb to Carl. If, if I'm Tom, I'm saying your boy cost you all the game. I mean, I told you. It's different. It's, 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 I told his reports out there that, that he he was on the he sat down on the bench next next to a player. The player yeah. got up off the bench and went and sat somewhere else. They don't. I didn't. Not banging with Nobody got time for that. Don't nobody got time for that. Did we you hear what win. Pat Frymuth said? I was about to bring that up. Pat Frymuth. I didn't send it to keep. But Pat Frymuth said that's not leadership. Even if you're not getting the ball, we don't complain about targets. And I block my ass off on every play. Pat, Pat said, oh, "You don't see me complaining about targets. You don't think I like to catch the ball." I got. I got paid. <laughs> like I got. I want to yeah. contribute. No, we got. We can't be. We can't be coddling yeah. George Pickens. And Don't want to coddle thing. him. That's why I said he enough. Like, he's like, wrong. He got to get it together. He's he got to get, get it together. And I like. I like. I like him. I like yeah, I like. But in that too. case, in that case, just sit him then. Like why you yeah. don't pick and don't, choose to play like I don't, now we're in the middle of a game and I'm looking like yo George yeah, looks look right bad. I just look bad. Or on the flip side, next to the punter. Or on the flip side, be professional and don't give up on your teammates. Fuck me as a coach. You gave up on your teammates by not showing effort. Everybody else is showing effort. You not going to show effort? Who are you? And and I agree. My only thing about Tom is just just say that's what it was, though. Don't try to tell him that you lim- that you limit his snap. Just say he wasn't hustling. Yeah. Bench- we can gotta beat around the bush because he got beat around the bush because George Pickens yeah. is known to crash out. <laughs> we but can hold like him. He said he say, say soft. That look, yo was right. He said, I mean, Joe Lewis said he was soft. It might be some truth to that. Like he like, said he was weak. Up. Yeah, he said, I mean, this is the second week in a row. It's the second. The ad, but I just threw you on your face, dog. Yeah, I did see that. I just threw I, you. I, on I saw. Face. That. I'm not weak. Am I emotional? Okay. Yeah, I was very strong in that. <laughs> <laughs> Am I emotional? But I'm not weak. I threw by your face mask on the ground. Stop it. <laughs> um, another thing that's not promising. We've seen parents get involved in these situations. Uh, Odell in Cleveland, his father made a whole highlight video of Baker. It's no highlight video, but George Pickens' father has stated that he is not pleased with Steelers coaches. So, regardless <laughs> if, if I want him if to stay, is. if he is, I love it. I love it. Regardless if I want him to stay or not, hey, mock it, mock him in Baltimore pickings, spike <laughs> them. <laughs> nah, he we wouldn't nah. go. For, y- y'all saw saw what happened to Zay Towers, Zay Flowers when he was like in posts about his uh his targets. I think this was I forget what game. I think this was after a win too. Maybe after the Cowboys game, he was like on tweets about his role and so on and so forth. No, that was the Raider game. 
it was the Raider game. Well, the next two games after that, he didn't have he didn't have the target share that he liked. So this was like his get back game. But I don't know. The more I think about it, the Ravens, the Ravens, and how we do business and how George does business, it just ain't good fit. Nah, yeah, it don't fit. George and I thought it would be cool with us. NFL young boy. I thought it'd be cool with us. Seemed like uh Tomlin met his match though. <laughs> like like with the Raiders entertain Pickens in a second. My my channel wise, yeah, but if Antonio Pierce don't like nah, Devontae no. Adams him. attitude, I'm not bringing in that work. attitude. He he got a lot of he got a lot of Coughlin in him. So that ain't gonna work. Nah. He said that ain't gonna work. He said you can go. That's pretty I much honestly exactly. don't know. Who would put up with Pickens? He's super talented. That's what's so frustrating about it. You can see thousand yard, eighty catches from him. You can see it. They said they was gonna. They said they gonna. They said the the people in the press box, like the the people that call the Steelers game, they were in the press box. They can call it whether it's a run or a pass, depending on where he how he come out the huddle. Yeah, that's bad. Yeah, shit. (laughs) Even yesterday on a pass route, he didn't even run a route. You can't do that. That's conduct detrimental to the team. Like That's we're, what, yeah, we're, we're yeah, out here yeah. trying to win a game. Let, yeah. Let's not forget. Like you know, I I know that you care about your numbers. Cool, but we're, the team goal. We're trying to win a game, and you not you half assing it in run plays, which we need. We need you to show effort because we're trying to run the ball. <sighs> on to the Raiders next week. We'll talk more on Friday. Should be interesting. Let's get Three to the top Y'all not. Y'all not. Shit! Did you see that? The bottom of the first. Mookie Best is trying to tie this game up. <laughs> Takes the ball deep to left field. Jerickson profile has other things in mind. Up, 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 up. You think you got one? Psych your mind. That's mine. Now I'm gonna tell the crowd how I feel about y'all because I really hate y'all. I do not like y'all. I do not like y'all. Great play by Jerickson profile. This is an exciting series. It's hatred. That makes baseball better. Uh, Mookie thought he had it, dude. He did. He kept Mookie running. <laughs> yeah, he kept running. I like what Jackson Pro. I caught it. I'm going to just look at the crowd, though. Y'all figure out if I got it in the replay. Look at this. Look at this. Times it well. Look at the jump. Y'all thought y'all had a souvenir from a Hall of Fame. Nah, they were throwing stuff at him later in the game. Yeah, I don't like that part of fandom. Like, I know you pay your money, but please don't disrespect me. <laughs> but It's all good until you run on test. Yeah, yeah. But that's a good play, yeah. man. Padres tied the series at 1 1. Keys, what's your top play? I think I know what your top play is. Yeah, good. man. That, we can see it for the fifth time, fourth. It's fine. Yeah, it was definitely it was definitely Lamar that, that he threw him like a rag doll. We gotta call that play the rag doll play. Likely in motion. He bubbles it, scoops it in, vacuums it home. Here comes Hubbard. Oh, he threw him away like a rag doll. And he throws in the end zone. Caught! Caught for a touchdown! Caught for a touchdown by Likely! Absolutely amazing! How in the world did he keep it together and then find the open receiver? Shout out yeah. to Kevin Holland. That is yeah, a great that was, no, he, he always got a more great, call. Yeah, he had the Houdini call, too. When he yeah, did he always got his great calls. But, I, I mean, it was just a great play because the Bengal fans, they, they thought it, they, didn't know what, they didn't know what was going on. They didn't know what – they was just really stunned and solid. And all, all the Ravens fans, we crashed out. All right, so we, we all crashed out. It wasn't no – like, literally, we – we it was some things that you don't want your kids to hear, that you don't want your grandparents to hear. Like, we we all Ravens fans. Was classless. Like we crashed yeah. out after that play. We crashed out because we we after, the, after that because when after at the after Jamal did that touchdown, we were you know we were just like damn like that that's crazy. But then once Lamar did that, I felt like that's when we we felt like all right, we probably gonna win this game because that it was it's, it's literally the best play I've ever seen. Like no no cap, it's literally the best play you you, you ever gonna see. Like is I didn't we we saw likely down there, but we ain't know he we ain't know if he can get him the ball. And then when he threw that ball and like he made a play, so just I think Nick said a couple. Shows ago, he try, he finally got somebody that he can just throw the ball up and go make a play. Because as much as Lamar made that play, likely made it made likely made a great play on that ball. So it was a good play to see. Man, it's literally a top one. If you think about all time great plays in sports, it's, you got to put it in that top ten, top fifteen. It's one of those type plays you see MJ going in the basket. You going that they gonna, Lamar gonna be up there with, with that type of play. That's what type of play that was. It's crazy. Nick, uh, I had the Kyler Murray touchdown. I think that set the tone for um, how the Cardinals went about their victory against the 49ers. 
kind of deflating to see, you know, a quarterback take off for 50 yards and get to the end zone that quickly. <laughs> Hello, motherfucker. He pointing, he pointing 40 yards. Yeah, he pointed at the yeah, he's, at he's the mad 40 like I'm with it. I'm 40. Oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> I'm Meet me at the crib. And that's after <laughs> and that's after ACL tear. I think he hit yeah, like 21 man. miles per hour, 22 miles per hour. So good to see. You think the car, you think you think the Niners just missing C Matt? That's all it is. Uh I think the Niners should have won yesterday and they yeah, they had again, a coach coaching it cost the teams a few games yesterday. Bills, 49ers. It was nasty out there, but uh I do think they they miss C Mac a lot, but you know, some of these games should they should have won, and that's on them. I don't know if they I don't know if it's like Super Bowl hangover where you lose like that and then like none of these games seem to matter as much. I don't know if they're going through the motions, but the West ain't a easy division. Uh, they they're competitive over there. They need to get their stuff together because right now they in third. Gotcha. That makes sense. Keith. Um, I went to Saturday school, uh Texas AM, Tyler White. I was watching this game live, but this pump was crazy, yeah. Like yeah, it just that watch, is crazy. Oh, watch, watch oh. when they show the slowdown of it, though. But Texas AM did a number on Missouri, but I was, I just happened to be watching this game. And when I saw the punt, I was just, I ain't seen a coffin punt like that in a minute. But watch the bounce. Like, look at the, look at the English. No, that's crazy. No, that's crazy. Yeah, that was, that was just a crazy play. Hey, and so then they ended up, um, if I, if I ain't mistaken, I think Missouri might have had a turnover right after that when they backed them up. So, um, salute to a no, they had to throw it out to get out before the half. But yeah, that was just a crazy play. See that on nitty gritty. We don't we don't hate on nobody. Punters can get top plays over here. Salute. <laughs> I ain't seen good special teams for my team for my coach, so hey. I had to go to college to find it. <laughs> I free, yeah, I free agent punter broke his leg. I mean, our special teams coordinator. Former special teams coordinator don't got special teams locked up. How? Nah, it's not that special. <laughs> <laughs> it's not that special. Um, takeaways. I just want to during my segment. It wasn't time for pleasantries and compliments, but now is. Hey, TJ, congrats for getting 100 second fastest to reach that feat. 109 games, only behind Reggie White, who did that shit in 96 games. I don't know how that is even possible, but salute to TJ, man. Well, I'll be saying that same with Derrick Henry, 100 touchdowns. Uh, I think he surpassed 10,000 yards yesterday, too. Uh, so shout out to D. Henry. I think Nick had a good point. My biggest takeaway was coaching this weekend. Um, we, the Bills, Sean McDermott. What was that? Like, to throw the ball three times, backed up in your own end zone, to not force Houston to take a timeout, um, to not put any pressure on them, to go empty at that. Um, I just thought it was bad coaching. I think he put his. I don't think he put his team in a position to win that game after they forced so hard to come back from a twenty to three deficit. Yeah, no, I I agree. That was that was piss poor. Uh, they had three timeouts left, like thirty, you know, thirty less than thirty seconds to go. You're at your two yard line, and you got Josh Allen in a shotgun with receivers that haven't separated all season, doing back shoulder fade from the two yard line. And you know that you punt, and then they're able to kick a field goal as time expires. It's just like these these coaches be out thinking, overthinking things too much, and uh, it's unfortunate. But you know, same with John Harbaugh. You know, sometimes, man, you just gotta figure out a way to win, despite of Bills weren't able to do that. Yeah, I'm about to say the Packers won in spite of Jordan Love yesterday because I don't know what that turnover was in the end zone. That was bad. Dan, Dan Oblowski you said that answer for your boy. But <laughs> <laughs> that answer for Jordan Love, man, you gotta get it right. <laughs> we, I mean, we said us, but you gotta start turning the ball over. Like he, 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 very, his arm is very, very talented. Probably top five talented arm. But I mean, if you're gonna turn the ball over, they ain't gonna win. I mean, they, 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 they squeaked out yesterday. But they, if they turn up, keep turning the ball over like that, they are not gonna win. Oh, uh, one another one. Uh, the Vikings may have the best defense in the league, and at five and zero, oh, they're not, they're not for play. Like they're for real. Yeah, and um, gotcha. I've been waiting for like the Sam Darnold magic to like subside, but now nah, he be- he believes that he's a different quarterback and he's playing like it. And uh, gonna have to watch out for them mm. for sure 
And Deshaun Watson, he's he's a, he's about an interception away from a sex tape being released. <laughs> <laughs> I see people keep saying like at this point I they're gonna go make an AI one at this point. They got to get yeah, out. they gotta create one. I can't understand why Jameis is playing. GPT. What you mean you don't know why he ain't playing? That man making two hundred thirty million dollars guaranteed. He's playing unless he dies. <laughs> <laughs> so let me ask you this. Let me ask you this. To jail. <laughs> I hear a lot of talk. Do y'all, do y'all think y'all a better team than the Bengals? So, oh, I don't know. What we're mm. good at, they're not, and what they can do, we can't. So I think it's a wash. <laughs> good answer. That's a good answer. <laughs> they, they can't play defense. We can. They can put up thirty-eight points. I wish. <laughs> their schedule, their schedule get light though, so they can Only get, they can put that put together two two wins. The Bengals schedule get about to get real light these next couple three four games, yeah. I believe. So they 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 can bounce back a little bit, um, but you know, they can't play defense. Like, so it don't yeah, matter. You get in a game like that, it's like I'm not even like when like y'all talk y'all shit. Y'all got a generational quarterback, but hey, I, I I want my defense to like contain him. You don't stop him. Just make a couple plays so they don't get forty one points. Somebody score forty one points on me, I'm crashing out. I, I, seen, yeah, right I, I mean, the time y'all do play, I was about to, I was about to score. <laughs> like, if somebody score 41 point. I'm out of here. Like, nah. So, the point hey, that chase you, screen had me, had me hot. Oh, no, that was crazy. Broke on, like, man. Hey, your, your, your million dollar, your, your 20 million dollar man take a wrong arm tackles, keys. I was like, yeah, what the it was ridiculous. It was ridiculous. That was three people. That was three people. He helps that. shit. We defend but, the right. Rokon just ain't he's slow. Shit. Jamal Chase fast. <laughs> <He ain't old. laughs> and then he had Mar- Marcus Williams was in quick saying. Like he just ran right by him. Jamal Chase, quick as hell. Like he took two steps, he was gone. Yo, hey, uh, so go ahead, Nick. No, you go ahead. Now I was gonna say, um, the Giants going to beat Seattle yesterday. It was a big win for them. Daniel uh, Day Ball. Dang, yeah, Daniel played play. really well. I, I won't get sucked into that, but yeah, he but is though. They, but... Their defense is playing well too. I mean, um, but it, it, it made Sunday, it made Sunday Night Football better than that much better because the Bengals yeah. got to go to New York. So yeah. I mean, yeah. New Jersey. Well, that's, well, that's, that's, that's how they can continue it. Is he gonna be consistent? I don't know, but hey, he had a good game. I mean, he could be consistent I, next week. I'm telling you, please. That's, the thing. And that's why. That's why I keep telling, That's why I'm trying to tell these Bengals fans like y'all. Okay, y'all got a great offense, but Daniel Jones can probably put up numbers against y'all next week. The what I seen today. And, and neighbors gonna be back too. Yeah, they'll and, be and, back. And the Giants play deep. They play better defense than the Ravens. Neighbors so, gives them. So you're gonna be okay. Like I think the Giants mm-hmm. might actually win that game against them next week. Neighbors gives them like a, a, a newfound confidence they hadn't had um, as far as play calling and and what they can accomplish on the outside when they get him in a good matchup. No, sometimes you know you don't even have to have a good quarterback. You, I always say it: if you have somebody that can make you look right when you're wrong, that's half the battle. And we know uh, uh, what's his name, Daniel Jones. He he can look wrong a lot, but yeah. you got neighbors out there. And shout out to Wandale Robinson too, making they plays. Ball, out yeah, there. Wandale been making plays. Yeah, ball told him get ball. the hell off live. <laughs> he was like, oh, "Yes, sir." <laughs> <laughs> I like that. Was that. Funny. Oh, one more thing: uh, the NFC South. I, I got my eyes on the NFC South. Two, three, and two teams. Uh, the Panthers. I mean, yeah, not the Panthers. Sorry, the Saints at two and two. They play tonight, but uh, I think those top three teams are very evenly matched, mm-hmm. and it really could yeah. go either way as far as who wins that division. And um, it's going to be a bloodbath. Um, those divisional games going that forward. NFC North too, Nick. That NFC North is crazy. Between the, between you the pack, talk between about the Packers and Lions, and now, yeah, and, the Vikings, and Chicago and the is three and two. Yeah, it's three and Chicago two. Three and two. Everybody yeah. got to. That's actually a good call. The NFC yeah. North, yeah. Five yeah. and North Minnesota. Crazy. When do they start playing each other? They got to start playing. It each gotta other. It got to be soon. It got. Well, Minnesota played Green Bay, but I know uh, Minnesota uh, plays Detroit after their bye. So next week, Minnesota versus Detroit, and uh-huh. uh, Hawkinson might be back for that matchup. His rehab is uh, on uh, closing up, so he might return versus his former team. And Chicago has a great defense. Like, say what you want about Chicago, but they got a great defense. And Caleb Williams, he's actually starting to string together 300 yard, you know, performances. Yeah. And I mean, it might take, it looked a lot better yesterday. I don't know. We watch a lot of sports, but it might take a couple of games. You know, it might take three or four. You're a rookie. You've never seen this yeah. speed before. It might, it might take right. a little bit, just a little bit. Give him, I just wanted him to bring his humility down. That's all. Yeah, that's true. But he got, he, he, I'm rooting talented. against him. I'm, I'm going to keep it a buck. I'm rooting <laughs> against him. But I always keep it real, but I don't want him to succeed. Yeah, if I had a if I had a uh honorable I do, bench, but y'all know what I mean. I had an honorable yeah. bench play the game. Jaquan Brisker laid the bricks on that dude yesterday. That was like 2006. I said, <laughs> damn, you allowed to hit people like that? Brisker. Who he hit? He's hit. Oh, he, he uh-huh. hit somebody who on he the hit? Panthers. 
Yeah, I don't oh, yeah, oh, yeah. I, I might just that dude don't nah, know his name no more. I don't know his name. <laughs> he don't know his name. Alicia Keys don't, don't know his name. Know. Nobody knows his name. <laughs> Nobody knows his name. That was like 2006 Raven Steel of him. <laughs> Damn, that is that is illegal in 2024. So somebody, somebody mentioned Denver. I don't know what they're cooking up there, but um, their defense the last three wow. games been a different defense. <laughs> Yeah. yeah. Said laugh. <laughs> hey, Bo Nix gets to yell at Sean Payton. Privilege. Yeah. Right. Pick and start to yell at Russ. Pick and start to yell and he gets benched. Man, Russ could never. If Russ decided to even lift a finger at Sean Payton, <laughs> well, you saw what happened. They paid him to go away. That man just wanted a parking space. Man, Bo Nix a grown ass man. You know what I mean? He's about as old as Russ, right? Yeah, he's about as old as Sean. So he, they, they probably saying it a little differently out there. But now, yes. salute to them. What are they three and two? Yeah, yeah. They, they, they turn it around. Three and two. I don't know how yeah. long it lasts, but it's a yeah. surprising three and it's, two. So enjoy it while it's here. I know. Michael for Flacco almost went dumb yesterday too. I'd be remiss if I ain't mention my old yeah. Yeah. count up homie. Yeah. yeah, shout out to Joseph. He went crazy. Did y'all, see his, did y'all see his post game? He finally told the truth. I mean, yeah. he told what everybody already knew. Oh, yeah, we well, knew that. We, but yeah. it was just we knew the, we, we knew by yeah. the way he was acting. Well, what he said? He basically said his last year in Baltimore, um, he was he was referencing Anthony Richardson, his hip injury, and mm-hmm. um, just basically saying like, as the backup, I'm here whenever I'm ready. Um, but you know, I know what he's going through because in my last year in Baltimore, I had a hip injury, and I didn't want Lamar to ever see the field because our and basically he was saying I already knew what was up. As soon as that, as soon as he hit the field, I'm done. And um, yeah, that's what happened. Funny thing is, it's a different scenario. You know, Anthony Richardson has the ceiling. He has, he, you know, obviously highly drafted. But they are a better offense when Joseph is playing. Yeah. Josh Downs, Michael Pittman. That old offense just looks a lot better when Joe is playing. It's just a tough an accurate, situation. Accurate he has an you went to the ball. So and Gardner and Mitchell, guys, and you got guys who run routes, get open. So Adonai Mitchell, like yeah. He's, Anthony Richardson will have to play better when he returns. That's a tough call because I mean, let's see. Do you want to win or do you want to protect feelings? <laughs> it is a very tough call. That's a tough call because if Joe Joe string off a couple of them wins and they putting up points and Anthony come back like, hey, I'm the number four pick. So right. it'll be here. It'll be after this year. Honestly, that defense isn't good enough. Nah. If my thing is, I'm I'm gonna go, I'm gonna rock with my my with Anthony Richardson and let him go through the growing pains. This is technically his rookie year. Joe can have you sneak into a playoff, but this defense, you ain't yeah. gonna win nothing. Yeah, that's true. And the run game is better with uh Anthony Richardson in there too, because he just makes it more dynamic. So I think he's safe, but it is a fun conversation to have. Hey, Joe Flacco took yo, Joe Flacco take your shit. Yeah, that's fun. But all right, let's wrap this thing on up. Go to the last commercial break, Nitty Gritty. Hey, yo, Nitty Gritty Sports Talk is now on YouTube. Make sure you like, comment, and subscribe. And while you at it, follow us on Twitter and Instagram. Name the same across all platforms. Nitty Gritty Sports Talk, Three Ravens and a Steeler. Now let's get back to the show. Good show, fellas. Good show. Appreciate everybody that listens live, everybody that checks out the podcast. If you view us on YouTube, keep, keep doing that. Liking, rating, commenting, and subscribe. We'll be back on Friday, same place, same time. Until then, everybody stay safe and be blessed. We out. Stop.